Um, next, we have Representative Garrett. Um, I don't, do you have any experts um, that you need to bring on? Yes, I do, Madam Chairwoman. Um, if you can move Senator Tallman and Alfeka Mutardi in. And I'll introduce uh, the House Memorial. I'll ask um, Senator Tallman, who uh, he's leading a Senate joint memorial on the same topic in the Senate. And then I'll ask um, Alfeka Mutardi, who's an economist working with the National uh, Infrastructure Bank Coalition to say a few words, if that's okay. Are they here? Yeah. Okay, um, may I start? Yes, Madam Chair? whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. So House Memorial 47 uh, urges the members of our congressional delegation to possibly co-sponsor, but to pass House Resolution 3339, the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021, that creates a National Infrastructure Bank to finance a variety of infrastructure projects, uh, which would affect our state and the whole country. Uh, infrastructure development, as we all know on this committee, needs careful planning and it needs a reliable source of long-term funding. So um, right now we have uh, money coming from the federal government. We have additional bills in Congress. However, there are things that have to be negotiated every year. Uh, this would remove that uncertainty and really um, enact a bill that would have steady fiscal implications. Um, House Mem the Memorial itself cites the American Society of Civil Engineers who produced the annual trip report that we hear every year in this committee. Uh, so we know that there's a shortfall of billions and billions of dollars to really address all of our infrastructure needs and to really keep them in good repair. This is not a new idea. Actually, the first Secretary of Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, established the first National Infrastructure Bank, uh, continued under George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and later uh, President Roosevelt during the World War II era. And I wanna add that we have had meetings. Um, I wasn't at the meeting with Congresswoman Harrell, but I know members of the, and I'm just gonna abbreviate it, NIB, National Infrastructure Bank, uh, members of that coalition met with Congresswoman Harrell's staff, uh, I was on a Zoom with uh, Representative Leisure Fernandez. We met with the Legislative Director of Congresswoman Stansberry, and we've had some Zooms about this with our two uh, US Senators. Uh, but we felt like it would be good to have a resolution, to have this memorial that we can provide with our congressional delegation, because there's so many needs, as we know, in our state. Uh, the other thing I might say is the Infrastructure Bank would be able to fund some of the things uh, like affordable housing, some of the massive water projects that we need, uh, that we won't, that, that we just need a real infusion of money and sometimes a need to work across state lines. Uh, so with that, I'd like to invite Senator Tallman to say a few words. And Senator, we do hope you heard the last discussion. And then I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Mutardi to say a few words. Senator, Senator Tallman. Tallman. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, just a quick com uh, comment on your uh, last bill. The uh, New Mexico has the third lowest gas tax at 17 cents. It hasn't been increased since 1993, 29 years ago. Senator Gonzalez and myself uh, tried to attempt to sponsor a bill last year to increase that, and it, got, it went nowhere. Um, I'm sponsoring a bill this year that would uh, levy a, uh, an additional registration fee on uh, electric vehicles uh, because obviously they don't pay uh, pay a gasoline tax. I've been working on that bill for three years. 
and uh, maybe this year will, will be the year, but obviously uh, we need to uh, uh, have electric vehicle owners pay, uh, pay toward the maintenance and construction of our roads. So National Infrastructure Bank, I real, uh, have real compassion on this subject. You know, for years, America was the envy of the world and its infrastructure, but no longer. We've fought, fallen far behind uh, China and uh, Europe. Um, you know, the need for uh, such a bank is, is really uh, uh, underscored by the uh, Society of uh, Civil Engineers, which just gave us uh, recently uh, a C minus on our infrastructure. We moved up from a D plus uh, from 2017. You know, fixes have been put off for way too long. You know, our airports, roads and public transportation that have uh, drawn frequent uh, comparison uh, with other developed countries. You know, you, you, I've been to China twice in the last 20 years, been to Europe a couple of times. You know, you come back and we look like a third world country. Um, we've really, really fallen behind. China spends 8% of their infra their GMP on infrastructure. China, Europe spends 5%. The United States spends a lousy 2%. We're really falling far behind the rest of the world. If you can't move goods and people fast, you're going to fall behind. Um, so it's really, it's really a huge, huge problem. 30% of our roads in New Mexico are, are uh, in poor condition. 20 to 25% of our households don't have broadband. Senator Padilla, who is the most knowledgeable about this issue, says we need a billion and a half dollars. Guess what? We're only getting a hundred million dollars from the uh, infrastructure bill that was signed by uh, Biden a couple of months ago. Um, in all fairness, though, uh, there are several grants, oh, other federal grants we can get that would maybe give us uh, somewhere between 800 and, and a million and a, a billion dollars. That still leaves a gap of a half a billion dollars for our infrastructure. The electric grid, we're getting no money on electric grid from the uh, infrastructure bill. And I've been told by experts that we are rapidly reaching the point where we will no longer be able to transport more electricity out of New Mexico because our grid can't handle it. No money from, we have no money for that. Um, Water, we're in a drought here in a large part of the, of the uh, West. Some experts are saying we could spend the whole trillion dollars that was recently enacted by Congress on infrastructure alone. Um, as you remember recently, our state engineer resigned two months ago and according to the paper, the major reason was because he doesn't have the sources. He claimed we need $2 billion for our infrastructure. And guess what? We're only getting a six of that, $350 million, one six of what we really need. And um, so it's, it's uh, in China, not only is China investing heavily in the, its domestic infrastructure, but it's providing loans and grants to small countries around the world to buy influence. So not only are they way ahead of us on their infrastructure, but they're getting money and loans to other countries. And we can't even adequately take care of our own. We're, we're, this country is in decline. People don't talk about it. Um, like I said, I've been to China a couple of times. The infrastructure will blow you away. They got two to 3,000 miles of high-speed rail. We have zero. Like I said, if you can't move goods and people fast, you're going to fall behind. Um, they have the airports look like something out of the space age, very futuristic, very modern. And of course, uh, their roads are in very good condition. Their bridges are pieces of, of art, beautiful bridges. And people, most Americans don't realize how far ahead Europe and China are in front of us. You know, like I said before, you go overseas, you come back here, we look like a third world country. Um, so uh, water infrastructure, um, also the, our expert in a few minutes will speak on the, uh, on the financing of this. 
But the bottom line is there's no debt and no tax increase. And as has been mentioned, it's been used uh, over the last two centuries by Washington, Lincoln, and FDR. Um, now, you, you talked a lot about roads in your first bill. And yes, they're very important. But as I've mentioned, there are other things that are very, almost equally important. Uh, water, our electric grid, high-speed trains, and broadband. They should be obviously in the mix. Obviously, roads are important, but so is water, our electric grid, and high-speed trains and broadband. So that's all I have. Be glad to answer questions. And thank you for giving me this time to speak to you this morning. Thank you. And thank Madam you, Chair. Senator. Thank oh, you, Senator, Senator. For, for joining us. Um, did you want Representative Mrs. Uh, Matardi to work, to speak? Yeah, um, Madam Chairwoman, if, if uh, Ms. Matardi can give some brief remarks, uh, particularly about the financing and any other things she feels. Go ahead, whenever you're ready, ma'am, and, and welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Alfeka Mutardi. I'm a macroeconomist. Um, I worked for 25 years at the International Monetary Fund, including uh, as a petroleum and uh, energy expert and also at previous organizations too. But uh, today I'd like to talk to you about this proposal in Congress, HR 3339. This is a bill that would create a $5 trillion public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all across the country. And the key here is that the bank is large enough to cover all of the financing gap that uh, has been identified by the American Society of Civil Engineers in 17 categories of infrastructure. In addition, it will cover some other key elements that we really need to get our American economy back on track and, and particularly in the state of New, uh, New Mexico. New Mexico as well. So that would include um, a high speed rail, affordable housing, uh, large scale water projects to address drought where we grow so much of our nation's food in addition to the other kinds of water infrastructure that we need. So the key uh, ticket here on this, on this bill is that it would create an institution, a long term source of financing for infrastructure that is large enough as I said, but in addition will not uh, put any more burdens on the federal budget, which is uh, also already experiencing a high degrees of uh, national debt, ha having gotten us out of the, um, the great COVID uh, depression from the last two years. But in addition, uh, it will not uh, make any calls on the Congress for uh, new, new monies. So it will be with this NIB with respect to the federal budget is budget ne neutral, no new taxes, no new debt, no new deficit spending. So it should be appealable to both Republicans and Democrats alike who are concerned with the, the federal side of finances. But there will be plenty of money uh, in the bank to provide all of New Mexico's needs. Uh, low cost, very low cost loans, for meeting all of your road projects, making sure that we get finally money out into state and local areas to repair roads, keep them maintained so that they will be uh, um, given a longer lifetime life expectancy. Uh, also connect them to your bridges. This is really critical. We've had bridges that have gone down recently, for example, in the Pittsburgh area. We don't want anything like that to happen in New Mexico. Uh, these linkages are very important for moving goods, agricultural goods included, to local markets. Um, so the bridges are a connect source of connection to the roads. We want to do the whole transportation network. In addition, we want to put in a high-speed rail in New Mexico because this will really uh, grow the economy even faster than the road network. We can connect Albuquerque to sister cities in Phoenix, Denver, and uh, Dallas, Texas, and grow the economy along those economic corridors. We can put in new water supply systems uh, to address the drought, uh, that, much like the ones that were built the last time we had a bank like this uh, during the, the uh, Great Depression and um, World War II mobilization when we built uh, uh, facilities like the Elephant Butte uh, Dam uh, along the Colorado River and other water facilities as well. We want to put in affordable broadband everywhere 
Uh, as Senator Tallman has said, the estimates are New Mexico's needs for broadband are anywhere from one to $2 uh, billion. What you'll be getting from the uh, bipartisan bill will be something very small for broadband. Um, but this will allow the state to compete and make sure that we get in resources all, all over the state. Um, we want to put in affordable housing. Uh, we noticed that now homelessness is starting to uh, occur in uh, downtown Albuquerque, where it hadn't been there before. Kind of, um, you know, it's, this is a condition in uh, major cities, especially in California and others as well. We want to make sure everybody has affordable housing and that they're housing secure. Uh, this will really all of it help to grow the economy. Um, New Mexico's economy is at the lower uh, portion uh, among the states in the in the country, and with big. I, I, what I've noticed is listening to these speakers before on the previous bill is everyone recognizes the link between building out infrastructure and building up the economy. And this will provide New Mexico with uh, uh, all of the resources that it needs uh, to do both. So thank you very much. Uh, and I, I appreciate it. And I'm available to uh, answer questions. Great. Thank you so much for your, your presentation. Um, Representative Garrett, did you wanna add any more? No, I'm excited that we can have this ambitious but very um, realistic uh, proposal to present today. And with that, we stand for questions. Great. Um, before we head to the committee members, um, for folks who are in attendees, if you are here to speak in favor of the legislation, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Okay, great. Um, first on the list, we have um, uh, Dennis Montoya, sir, go ahead. Mr. Montoya, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I am the immediate past state director of New Mexico LULAC. We have endorsed this proposal primarily because it's going to benefit the state of New Mexico and our constituents. It's going to create 25 million new jobs throughout the country, and a good portion of those jobs will come to us. As our uh, expert, Ms. Mutardi, has pointed out New Mexico is among the poorest states in the country, and we can only benefit from a national infrastructure bank that would finance the projects that we need at a level that we need. My own dad worked for the uh, CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corporation under the FDR administration, one of the few times when Northern New Mexico, where I come from, received adequate attention for our infrastructure and economic needs. I would like to point out that the committee proceedings are being presented live this morning to my health education class. And I have explained to them that this proposal is essential to their future economic health. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to address this committee, and we urge you to support H.R. 3339. Thank you, Mr. Montoya. Um, next, we have Mark Strand. Yes, my name is Mark Strand. I am the current president of the Central New Mexico Labor Council. I'm here to uh, urge and support House Memorial 47 which urges Congress to create a $5 million national public infrastructure bank to land for infrastructure projects all across America. Being a lineman by trade, I've worked on our national power grid and I understand the importance of how much we need to expand and strengthen our current grid to deliver the new renewable power that we are planning on putting on our current existing grid. This bill also allows for high-speed internet. We're a very rural state and we need to expand our internet all across our state. This allows the means to get it done. Building a high-speed rail project. Um, you ne New Mexico is top of the line when we come to all of our programs, our 
our national labs and everything else. We've rose into the top. By getting a high-speed rail in here, we'll be connecting with, with the rest of the America and hopefully be able to expand on what we already have in place. This is also the only bill that I've seen that brings in new water to New Mexico. Right now, we're currently in a horrible drought. And by bringing in fresh water, we'll have a, an opportunity to continue with what our forefathers have started. So if, with that, I urge you to support House Memorial 47. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strand. Um, next, we have Ray Ellen Smith. Yes, hello. My name is Ray Ellen Smith. Um, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I am a New Mexico native, a retired CPA, and I am the president of a large um, activist group called Indivisible Albuquerque. I support the big idea of the National Infrastructure Bank and HM47. I heard on, an, on a report on NPR this morning from an international environmental group who was studying what it's going to take to get us to net zero by 20, 2050 around the world. And they said that, that the, the only way we're gonna get there is with a fundamental economic change worldwide. I believe the National Infrastructure Bank is a way for us to achieve that fundamental economic change because as you know, banks create money and we, and we all know that. Um, in addition to the descriptions that we've already heard, I wanna point out a few things that are a little more specific maybe to New Mexico. When we can offer good paying jobs, as was mentioned, 25 million new jobs um, around the country. Um, our people aren't subject to needing money, needing to borrow money from the predatory lenders here in New Mexico. Um, we can develop water transportation networks from the wetter parts of the United States to our beloved desert home. Uh, we, we can improve our uh, recreational areas, which bring in tourists and improve our economy. Our upgraded power grids would enable us to send, send our plentiful solar and wind to out-of-state markets. This is a no new taxes idea. It is a big, big idea. It's tried and true. It's re recession proof and will give us lots of jobs. We need the New Mexico legislature in the yes column to encourage passage of U.S. House Bill 3339 in Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have uh, John Lipschitz. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee, John Lipschutz with the New Mexico Federation of Labor. Uh, we stand in strong support of this measure and thank the sponsors uh, for all the reasons that have been stated before, especially the fact that not only will this, uh, this bank create jobs, but as was previously stated, these will be good jobs. It will be higher paying jobs, one, ones that will take into account things like prevailing wage. Um, so for all of these reasons, we uh, do stand in strong support and hope you will as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next, we have George and Dorothy Gamble. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear I, you. I am Dorothy Gamble. I'm a vol outreach volunteer with the Alliance for Local Economic Prosperity. And in that capacity, I, I represent the Alliance on the Food and Ag Policy Council. The Food and Ag Policy Council is celebrating its 20th anniversary year this year. And it has worked for 20 years to, to uh, support policy that protects water, that works for healthy soil that works toward food production for uh, especially farmers markets that, uh, ha that supports policies that support our farmers and ranchers who grow our food. And this morning, I'd just like to say a word uh, on all our behalves uh, already mentioned by Senator Tallman. Water, the humble resource water is the most important resource New Mexico has. There are currently six bills pending in this legislative session that relate to water. If they pass, if half of them passes, it's a drop in the bucket of what is needed 
to protect and, and develop our resource water. Uh, we, we need uh, money to finish the 50 year water plan. We need money to actually computerize the information we have about water in this state. Uh, we need water, we need money to put into the water trust fund. There are so many areas that we, we are underfunded and cannot protect water. So I do support House Memorial 47. I hope you move this, legis this memorial forward. And later today, you will uh, be hearing more about uh, Farm and Ag Day in the uh, full legislature. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, next, we have Kelly Allen. And, and just for folks who are giving public comment, um, if I know that there's, um, I'm, I'm please feel free to share as much as you'd like. Um, but if there's any redundant messages, if you if we could just um, keep it going um, with with that. So um, I'll 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 give it over to Sarah Manning. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee. Um, I am Sarah Manning um, from Albuquerque, and I'm also a member of the Alliance for Local Economic Prosperity. I have, um, and will speak to a couple of different things that my uh, compatriot, um, uh, Dorothy, just spoke. The National Infrastructure Bank deserves New Mexico's support because New Mexico needs adequate investment for in infrastructure. While we are grateful that the bipartisan bill, just infrastructure bill that was just passed by Congress, it only funds one tenth of what we need. Under the proposed National Infrastructure Bank, New Mexico will receive access to $33 billion. And I have to say, I applaud this committee's uh, discussion of the previous bill because it talks about the legislative process that so typically results in a lack of consistent funding for infrastructure and maintenance. By creating a national infrastructure bank, money for building and maintaining our infrastructure will not need to be allocated through the federal budget or subject to political pressure. As a bank, the NIB will be able to make loans for infrastructure when they are needed, regardless of federal politics or timing. I know, Madam Chair, that this committee understands that infrastructure equals jobs. And we're talking about our future. We're talking about jobs for our young adults here in New Mexico. They are technical jobs. They are difficult jobs. They are well-paying jobs and jobs with benefit. But infrastructure also connects us for business, for government, for tourism. High-speed trains, yes, can connect us to the rest of the world, um, which we desperately need, but we also need freight trains for rail, for example, from Farmington to Gallup. Infrastructure also means safety, safety for water, for electric, for internet, for our healthcare system. Um, when we improve those areas, we all are safer. New Mexico is a big state with big needs and we need reliable funding to upgrade existing infrastructure and to create the infrastructure that will create the future New Mexico that we all dream of a thriving and very unique state going into the future. I urge this committee to approve House Memorial 47. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee. Thank you, Sarah. Next, we have Kelly Allen. Thank you so much, Madam Chair and um, committee members. Um, I don't want to be redundant um, uh, with everything that's been said already. I do want to speak on two things specific to, to, to my heart. Um, that um, one of my major concerns is the homelessness problem in Albuquerque um, or the state of New Mexico as a whole. Um, 
in preparing for, for speaking with you today, I did a, a bit of research um, and the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness or HUD um, said that there are um, 3,333 homeless people in the state of New Mexico. Now, this was based on January of 2022, I'm sorry, January of 2020 data. So um, with the pandemic and loss of jobs, um, I'm sure that that number is much higher. Um, but uh, one of the concerning uh, numbers that I found was uh, the total number of homeless students in New Mexico is 11,574 people, um, on, uh, you know, students that um, are suffering from chronic homelessness. So, so my big issue on the passage of this um, NIB, the National Infrastructure Bank, um, HR 3339 is, is homelessness and, and the water shortage. Um, I personally live in the East Mountain area and um, every home on my road has um, either uh, had to drill a new well or um, install a cistern system um, because the East Mountain area is simply drying up. Um, we have been impacted by this our, myself. I live with my 80 year old parents and we have to decide who's gonna take a shower or who's going to do a load of laundry on any particular day because the water issue is, is so bad. And I know it's bad across the entire state of New Mexico. So I just wanted to speak to um, on my support of um, HR 47 um, and thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Kelly. Next we have Richard Roybal. <clears throat> Richard, go ahead. Um, we'll come back. Um, next we have Rudy Martinez. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the committee. Um, I won't be redundant on the um, topics that have been discussed, but certainly uh, in my view, adopting the National Infrastructure Bank is, um, for all the reasons that were stated about jobs and whatnot, but also it uh, comes down to the health and safety of, of New Mexicans, especially those in the rural communities. So I stand in strong support of the uh, Memorial 47 and urge the committee to move it forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative. And I, for some, I, I assumed it was a different Rudy. So it's it's good to hear your voice. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Next, we have Laura Montoya. Good morning, Madam Chair. This is Laura Montoya. I am a former Sandoval County treasurer and resident of Sandoval County. Um, there's so many infrastructure needs and demands in New Mexico and where counties and municipalities need it most, um, some more urgent than others. Letting Congress know that New Mexico supports HR 3339 lets them know we have infrastructure needs like building bridges, updating our water systems, providing solar, making sure we have broadband in our rural communities, providing funding for our farmers and ranchers that feed us and helps us to create more jobs that are high paying, that our union members can help use their special skills to create more for New Mexico. I urge the body to please support our House Memorial 47. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, next we have Anthony Martinez. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony U. Martinez. I'm a retired university business professor and a retired Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Army. Uh, as a retiree, I devote my time to serving on the National Latino Farmers and Ranchers Trade Association Board of Directors, and we have a chapter uh, in, in New Mexico. We support Latino, Native American and black farmers and ranchers. Also, I devote my time helping grow small business uh, in the private sector and Native American communities, including the Navajo Nation, especially around technology and broadband. 
I'm also a pretty active uh, supporter of the National Infrastructure Bank Initiative. Uh, I support the National Infrastructure Bank uh, in five ways, but I'm only gonna mention three because the others have been repeated. One is growing the private sector economy of the Navajo Nation and Pueblo tribal communities. Number two would be overall, it will help create huge numbers of jobs and business opportunities for everyone in the state, including Latino, Navajo, and Pueblo tribal contractors and subcontractors. A key to growth will be the huge infusion of funding in the construction industry across the state. And finally, the National Infrastructure Bank will enhance more local choice determined by local governments and, and the people as previously discussed in the earlier hearings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Um, we have Richard Royball, we'll try you again. I don't know if his um, mic is working, but he did leave a comment earlier um, where he, he said, my name is Richard Royball, LULAC district director. He currently serves on a financial institution board of directors, retired engineer, and he wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly supports House Memorial 47. Okay, is there any opposition to this legislation? doesn't there's no hands raised for opposition so we'll go to committee members